In this video I'll be installing a door which I made in a previous video. I'll leave a link to that in the description box below if you haven't seen it. And this is to replace a rotten door on my parents workshop garage thing. When I removed the old door I was surprised at how heavy it was and after doing a bit of crowbar investigation there was a really nice piece of fluted glass underneath which someone had hidden by pinning some plywood over the top. The bottom of the door is where most of the rot was and the sill just fell off as I removed the door. Here I'm offering up the new door just to check that the dimensions my dad had given me were correct and fortunately they were, it seemed to fit the opening nicely. I'm going to prop the door on a couple of packers, not too many though as we don't want mice to be able to get in underneath the door. And I can mark up the old position of the hinges onto the door and also the centre of the latch. I picked up some new brass hinges because brass doesn't rust and the old ones were covered in about 300 layers of paint. Offering up the hinge to my marks allows me to position the new hinges where the old ones were in relation to the door frame and I use a knife to mark around the hinge and do the rest of the work with a chisel. That's a nice fit so I'm going to drill some pilot holes and then screw them in place and I can do the same again at the bottom of the door. This is Gypsy the Cat. This video is sponsored by Tradeify, an all-in-one job management application for busy tradespeople and it's available on both mobile and desktop apps. It's the fastest growing job management application and it's designed to take all of the hassle out of managing things like dealing with incoming inquiries, raising quotes, issuing and tracking invoices and timesheets, appointments, GPS job tracking and reporting. For a free 14 day trial, use the link in the description box below. And if you'd also like to get 50% off Tradeify for three months, once the trial expires, you can use the promo code Rag and Bone when you sign up. So because the old door is a little bit thicker than the new door is, I've offered up the new door and added a bit of masking tape just to show me where the door finishes. And I've unscrewed one of the hinges so that I can figure out where that needs to be positioned in order for the door to finish flush with that masking tape. And that's just going to make sure that the door closes onto the door stops without any big gaps. And the hinges were never actually recessed into the door frame. This is all just flush. And I think I'm going to mount the new hinges without recessing them too. But I will need to remove some material just for the barrel part of the hinge. The main reason I chose not to recess these hinges is because I was worried that the new door might not be quite wide enough because I had made it based on the dimensions my dad gave me, which he took from the old door that we removed earlier rather than the opening itself. Really, I should have visited to take measurements of the opening myself before making the door, that would have been the best option. And if I had done that, I would have designed the door slightly differently too, which I'll talk about later in the video. I'm using a wedge to lift the door up to the right height before getting a couple of screws into each hinge just to see how it was hanging. So with the door hung, I'm looking pretty good at the top but at the bottom, it's rubbing on the door frame. So I'm actually going to recess the bottom hinge in a little. And then it closed really nicely. Now, because I built the frame of my door using three by twos, which measure 63 by 38 millimeters, I needed to buy a 50 millimeter or two inch sash lock. Most sash locks are usually 63 millimeters or two and a half inches deep. And obviously if I'd have got one of those, I wouldn't have had quite enough material to set the lock into. 
Here I'm marking up where I want the centre of the sash lock to be after carefully measuring up the old latch plate position on the door frame and I'm using an auger bit with a piece of masking tape on to allow me to drill out material to the depth of 50mm. And the rest of the work is done with chisels. Then my dad made me a fried egg roll. And next I can recess the faceplate of the sash lock. And once that was done I added a bit of the same stain as I'd used for the door just to help hide a little bit of tear out I had at the top. This came with a nice brass cover plate, but before I add that I need to drill a hole for the handle spindle and also the keyhole. I drill the holes from both sides of the door to make sure that they are aligned. And then I fit the sash lock, cover plate and door handles. So here's a problem I wasn't expecting. The door handle hits the door frame. So I think I'm just going to have to chase a little bit out of the door frame in order to get the door handle to close. So this was a bit annoying. I'm sure I could have found another door handle that would have given enough clearance for the door frame, but this makeshift solution is going to do the job for now. Apparently the old handle was really close to the door frame too, so something here is a little off, probably the door frame I expect, and having to use a 50mm sash lock obviously made the situation worse, but no big deal. Finally, I just need to fit the sill at the bottom, so I'm marking up where it needs to be placed. This has a drip groove underneath, and I made this in the previous video too. I just need a few pilot holes, and then I can get a clamp to hold it in place while I screw it in from the back. I did have a shiny new latch plate to fit as well, but as it was slightly bigger than the old one and by this point I was cold and wet as the weather hadn't been kind to me and I wanted to warm up and spend some time with the family so that will have to wait until another day. So that's the door done and I'm happy with it aside from two things. One, I think I should have placed the centre rail much lower. It would have looked better in relation to where the door handle is. Oh, and by the way, the door handle really should be higher than this anyway, as the standard height is around 950mm or 37 inches. Through the magic of editing, here's a photoshopped impression of what I mean. Obviously I could have fitted the handle higher up, but then I would have needed to fill the holes in the door frame where the latch was originally. And two, I'd have searched for a handle that was narrower to get around that issue of it hitting the frame. Both of those issues could have been resolved if I'd have visited to measure up everything before I designed the door, but at the end of the day, this is a workshop door. It doesn't really matter that much to my mum and dad, as long as it's not rotten and it's looking tidier. One final thing to mention, obviously there's no door threshold or sill underneath the door, and I guess there probably should be, although it's never been an issue because the concrete is sloped away from the building, so the rain runs away from the building really well. But if you know of a product that can be fixed directly to the concrete, then please do let me know in the comments and I'll look into getting one fitted. If you'd like to help support the channel, plus get early access to my videos, exclusive content, free project plans and cut lists, and a name credit at the end of my videos, you'll find links to my Patreon and YouTube channel membership in the description box below. Thanks for watching. Thank you.